Hello, my name is Anthony Salter of Viridian Games, and today I'm going to talk about my experience participating in Ludum Dare 41. I've always loved Ludum Dare. I love the concept because it's basically Iron Chef game dev. But my desire to participate has often outstripped my capacity. More than once I've started but been unable to finish due to family or work issues. My wife once told me, I don't know why you do those contests. They're for young people with no kids. But then I watched Phil Strahl's absolutely amazing LD41 keynote. I'd never heard of Phil, but I became an instant fan, and the keynote just reminded me of how much I love Linum Dare and game development in general, so I decided to give it a shot. The hour of the theme reveal came, and it was combine two incompatible genres, and I loved it! Far too many themes speak to a mood or setting, and that's art, and I'm not an artist, I cannot art. But this theme actually spoke to gameplay, and I immediately started having ideas. Now, if you know me, you know that I love real-time strategy games, and their decline has been a source of frustration for me. So I knew that RTS was going to be one of the genres. Fortunately, I'd already written a couple of small RTS games, so that wasn't going to be a problem. But what to combine it with? It was clear that it needed to be something completely off the wall and seemingly incompatible, and in a flash of inspiration, I decided on a dating simulator. I knew I was onto something when I told my daughters my idea, and they both immediately cracked up. And thus was born Red vs. Blue, a game where you spend five minutes frantically building up your army only to instantly fall in love with the devilishly handsome enemy commander and then try to get him to fall in love with you. So I put on a chiptune YouTube channel, link in the description, and started working and I knew I was onto something because the design just poured out of me. Look at me! I'm typing like a crazy person! I knew I was going to need graphics for my soldiers, and I initially thought I was going to base them on Command & Conquer, but I eventually made them more like the soldiers from the Amiga game Cannon Fodder instead. And then I played a little World of Warcraft. It's not my fault, I had to check on my garrison. Then I hit the hay. And as I was falling asleep, I had an idea, this happens to me a lot, that I could incorporate clicker mechanics into the RTS side to make people think that the game was a clicker RTS mashup, hiding the eventual surprise of the dating sim. This worked a little too well, as you'll see. Saturday dawned, and I immediately got back to work. I fleshed out a bit more of the design, and with the design doc and some graphics in hand, I actually started coding. It didn't take me long for me to get an initial simple project up and running. Since I'd done RTS mechanics before, I decided to start with the hard part, the dating sim. While I'd never actually played a dating sim before, I'd played tons of games with romance mechanics, so I figured I knew what I was getting into. Ask the right questions and say the right things in the right order and you win, right? Well, that's how I was going to do it. I decided to create five categories that you could make statements or ask questions about. Picking the right statements in the right order would cause the enemy commander's disposition to rise, while the wrong ones would cause it to fall. But wrong choices could become right if chosen at the right time, so it's possible for every option to be right if you choose them in the right order. Then it was time to make more programmer art. I made two borders, a gray one for the RTS side, and a bright yellow one with flowers for the dating sim side. As Saturday ended, I tested my system and was pretty happy with how it came out. I was honestly astounded at how on track I was. Sunday, last day. The deadline was 8pm local time. All I had to do was write an RTS with clicker mechanics. Easy, right? I also knew that I needed a face for the devilishly handsome enemy commander, and after a little brainstorming, I decided to base it off of Max from Advance Wars. Then more World of Warcraft. Don't judge me. My previous experience with RTS games stood me in good stead, and I got a map, four buildings, and three unit types implemented pretty quickly. I whipped up a rather terrible user interface for the game. Far too many people complained that it wasn't clear where the buttons were, but that was just my terrible art skills. I finalized the map for the RTS side and continued working on the clicker mechanics. It all finally started to come together. Then I tested the integration between the RTS side and the dating sim side. I whipped up some sound stuff in BFXR, you know, like every other LD creator does, but then I decided to do something I'd never done before. I added music. I found a site called Abundant Music that creates random music right in your browser. The tunes export as MIDI, so I had to convert them to AUG using synth font and Audacity. 
As I finished up the project, I realized that my plan to write the game in a smaller resolution and then scale it up to a bigger resolution wasn't going to work. I could have sworn I had that feature built into my engine, but it turns out I didn't, and my attempts to quickly fix it all failed. So I resigned myself to shipping the game in a tiny window. Then it was time to package, upload, ask a friend to test, realize I'd forgotten to include a vital library, repackage, and re-upload. I ended up working for about 23 hours and 28 minutes during the course of the 48 hours. I felt that that was a pretty good balance for someone with a family. Then it was time to judge everybody else's much better entries while I waited for the results. Comments started coming in on my game and I noticed a problem. People were seeing that I had mashed up RTS and Clicker and were assuming that that was the point of the game, quitting before the 5 minute timer wound down and it switched to the dating sim. I wish I'd reduced the timer to 3 minutes instead, and I ended up doing that on the itch version. And some people said that they were disappointed that they didn't get to see the battle at the end if they refused to parlay or lost the dating sim. Instead, they just got some starky text from me about whether or not they would have won the battle. This is something else I fixed for the itch version. But in general, people were pretty positive, despite the terrible art and the low resolution. Finally, the results came out. And they weren't great, but I wasn't really trying to win. I did okay in theme and mood, but my hiding of the game's true nature may have caused me to score lower in fun and innovation. But hey, I broke top 100 in humor! What I was really trying to do was to get back to basics and do something simple. I wanted to remind myself how easy and fun game development can be, and that's exactly what happened. I loved how LD41 came out for me, and I can't wait to do another. Oh, and one last thing. If you play the game again after you do the dating sim, you'll discover the real name of the game.